Tie your kangaroos down, sports fans. Yeah, let's go for it! Throw another shrimp on the Barbie girls, because here I come! Here we go again. Yes, Bernard and Bianca, stars of The Rescuers, return in The Rescuers Down Under making new friends and a few new enemies too while trying to rescue a kidnapped boy and a magnificent eagle from the clutches of a cruel poacher a clinch that bird's gonna make me rich <laughs> the rescuers down under is a rarity in disney history a full-length sequel to an animated feature in the original Rescuers, Bernard and Bianca faced their foes in the dark waters of Devil's Bayou. In the Rescuers Down Under, our tiny heroes encounter trouble on a more epic scale. We knew that Bernard and Bianca would come back in this movie because it's a film about them. There are a lot of scenes in this film that I'm very excited about, mostly because I like watching the characters in the environments. I consider this film an epic action-adventure film. It's gonna have epic shots like you've never seen before, scope, size, scale, just gigantic vistas and, and beautiful multi-level effects like Bambi had at the opening shot. That's gonna be like a throwaway shot for us. We're gonna have so much dimension to our world in the outback. No matter what we're doing, we're approaching this film visually. We're trying to make every shot something you're gonna look at and, and just hit you over the head with, wow, that's an impressive shot. That's an incredible visual. The Rescuers Down Under began a feature animation tradition, the research trip. To capture the look and feel of Australia, the filmmakers embarked on a two-week exploration down under. We had to go and, and take pictures or do sketches. It kind of felt like going to Mars or <laughs> to another world. You want to make things real so that people identify with it, but yet you still want to have an element of uh, fantasy to it because that's the magic. That's the one thing that animation can bring to a film is that it can take you just a little beyond what reality is. The latest advances in computer-aided animation helped the Disney artists create this animated reality and provided a majestic Australian setting for their tiny performers. <laughs> Next up, Mugwump Flats! And we felt the size of a, an ant in this huge, huge world. So we tried to get that kind of feeling in animation where the characters are just lost sometimes in this vast environment. So we're trying to do that and, and give you a feeling of how big Australia really is, especially to a mouse. Oh my gosh. As they do in all the new animated features, the Disney team created a whole new cast of supporting actors with their own unique and distinct personalities. Yeah. Yeah. These personalities are created by gifted artists and animators who don't just draw their characters. They follow a long-standing Disney tradition of performing their characters. I have a tape of the voice of the actor, and so I listen to it over and over again. And I actually kind of acted out in the mirror, you know, playing his voice or thinking about his voice so I can get a feeling for how I'm going to put it on paper. Mice don't really get up on their hind feet and walk around, you know, so how do you make it still look like a mouse and, and yet be a character, you know. It's really difficult. You're walking a fine line between the two worlds, you know. You want to make him believable, but you also want to make him believable as a character with a personality, you know, with facial expressions and gestures in the hands. Which way you the leading mouse of the Rescuers Down Under's animal cast is the timid Bernard. Suicide trail? Good choice. One of Disney's most unlikely heroes. Bernard is uh, so, so endearing and so heroic in this film. He's the underdog. He's really our, uh, our little link with the audience in this story. Bianca is the leader of the, the little duo, you know, the, the rescue team. But Bernard's the one you link with because you know that he's been trying to propose to Bianca and he keeps getting uh, put off for some reason or other. So you're rooting for him. Miss Bianca, I, I would be most honored if... if I love that tension between those characters. We're gonna see Bernard and Bianca in a whole new way from the original Rescuers. And if you look closely, you'll see she has perfectly blended rouge on her cheeks, blended eyeshadow. These are all character details that we're now able to put into the film. In fact, when you look at the restaurant scene, Miss Bianca, beautifully radiant, is in fact reflecting the candlelight off the table. The diffused snow is falling in the background and she fits perfectly into her environment. What really makes this movie happen are brilliant, wonderful characters that an audience will love, 
brought to life by Disney animators, working one frame at a time over two years. Wilbur! Oh! Don't ever do that to me again! The supporting cast includes Wilbur the Albatross, high-flying brother of the rescuers Orville, Frank, the frantic frill-necked lizard. There's Cody and Marahute, the boy and the eagle, and the villain's sinister sidekick, Joanna, who is always doing her best to do the worst for her boss, McLeach. How about some great big triple-A jumbo eagle eggs, huh? And there's Jake, the most heroic kangaroo mouse in the entire outback. Thank you. Welcome to Australia, man. Designing the cast of animal actors for the rescuers down under began at California's world-famous San Diego Zoo. Disney artists spent time up close and personal with a variety of down-under animals, everything from kangaroos to koalas, emus to painted snakes, even the laughing kookaburra bird. It's a necessity to look at real life because that's where we draw our creativity from. It's very difficult to make something out of nothing. So we will look at animals, we will look at the kangaroos and the koalas and the platypuses and anything that helps to inspire the artist to take it a little step beyond reality is what we look at. To most of us, this probably looks like any old lizard, but on the drawing board of supervising animator Kathy Zielinski, he becomes Frank, the frantic frill-necked lizard who's gone a little stir-crazy from too much time spent as an inmate of McLeach's illegal menagerie. Frank is like this little wiry guy. He's a real funny, comic relief type of character. He has a real funny little voice, and he kind of just moves around real quickly, and he has this big frill that moves in and out with his emotions, how he's feeling at the time. Back at Walt Disney Feature Animation, artists continued to draw inspiration from other real-life animals. There was the living, breathing kind that ate live crickets and took an occasional walk around the office. And this magnificent stuffed specimen, on loan from a museum, provided supervising animator Glenn Keane with insights into his design, drawing, and performance of Marahute. Animators are cast to a character like actors are. And for this film, I've been cast as a huge eagle. I mean, I've been a little tiny mouse, I've been a, a dragon. In the last film, I was a mermaid. In this one, I get to fly. So I'm animating Marahute, who is an eagle with maybe a 40-foot wingspan. I study a lot about how things move and know about uh, animals. In this case, I didn't know anything about birds, though. And I've had to, to learn the bone structure. So we got this eagle from the Natural History Museum so I could become familiar with it have to know that eagle as well as I know my own body structure. Uh, one of the neat things I learned about eagles is that all animals, including birds, are basically the same anatomy as a man, as a human. If you can learn to draw a human, you can draw an eagle. Uh, this is his shoulder and his elbow and his wrist comes off here. And his, these primary feathers are like your fingers that, that feel the air. And as he's flying, he can sort of man maneuver himself around like that his hip and his knee, his heel and his toes. So I start relating myself to the eagle, and the better I can do that, the more I can feel like it's me flying in the air. And once I can feel like it's me flying, and I'm not just doing a drawing, then it takes the animation that next level up, and people believe it because the artist believed it. We're trying to make this oh, the we, most we, almost that sincere that and, and genuine um, acting in the animation that we've ever had in an animated film. I think that's when an audience really gets wrapped up in it and, and they're not watching a film anymore. They're, I mean, they're just caught up in a story. They're not even aware they're sitting in a theater. I honestly believe that The Rescuers Down Under is an extraordinary film. And even more than that, I believe that the message of this film, that someone very small and someone seemingly helpless can conquer evil, it's a good message. Well done, mate. A code red, a code red. Attention all rescue aid society delegates. All delegates, please report immediately to the main assembly hall. This is an emergency meeting. Tiny heroes courageously dedicated to helping the world's underdogs. Working unseen, Shh, but on a majestic scale with epic sweep and a little bit of comedy thrown in just for the fun of it. Walt Disney Feature Animation achieves another triumph of warmth, laughter, spirit, and character in 
The Rescuers Down Under. Sky. Our hearts we pledge to thee. 